So here's an example from Wikipedia on public key cryptography. So the, the recipient's public key you can use, which is published and everyone knows everyone's key, to lock the data and then it goes over the network to the recipient. The recipient uses his or her private key to open it, the data. And how does it work? First thing is, as a user, Alice, say, and Alice would be a user, so basically Alice takes a large random number and a key generation program and generates a key pair. And it's a large random number so that a lot of number theory involved out here. We'll look at it in the RSA lecture. But basically, everybody gets a unique, almost unique public and private key. So there's no relation between anyone's key. And having one gives you no clue about the other. So the first uses, so any, uh, Bob uses, wants to write to Alice. So he says, hello Alice, encrypts it using Alice's key. And he gets some numbers and mails it. Alice uses her private key to de decrypt it and read hello Alice from Bob. So anyone can lock using Alice's public key, but only Alice can decrypt using her private key. So, and security depends on uh, keeping the private key secret. You basically keep it locked on your computer. And only when you need it, you unlock it and take it out. And the second purpose of the public key is signing. Only Alice can lock the thing. So what Alice does is she writes a check for $500 and then signs, that means encrypts it using a private key, then mails it. Now anybody can open it using, so Bob opens a check. And how does he open it? Uses Alice's public key. And only Alice's public key will work. So he knows Alice, only Alice could have sent a letter and nobody else can write a check with Alice's private key. So then he knows, okay, Alice sent this uh, check. And this is called signing. And then again here, the Alice doesn't give her private key to anybody. And there are many different algorithms. So one of them is the Diffie-Hellman key exchange. So basically, how do you exchange keys? You have your key pair, and everybody has their own key pair. So what they do is, they, they use okay then the next thing we're going to look at the algorithm for key exchange so everybody has a key pair now you won't be using public key private key for sending data every day when you're talking to a website you won't be generating everything because it's expensive to to encrypt data using public key and private key there's a lot of number crunching so what did they do is they they uh, both sides say alice and bob they will have to come up with a shared secret which is a common pa password or key and they want to sh come up with a common password which doesn't have to go over the internet they don't want to send it the password common password over the internet how do you do that so what you do is you take bob public key and alice's private key and combine them to get a number and vice versa bob does alice's public key and his own private key and gets another number and then this is a diffie hellman key exchange scheme and after that, after they generate the thing, they have a shared secret. And they can use this password to encrypt using a symmetric encryption, which is faster, much faster. So the Diffie-Hellman key exchange allows each user to have the shared lock. Do you have your own lock? You lock it, send it here. Alice will be able to open it, even though the password never went on the network. So let's see how can we do some number theory with, with this kind of for uh, encryption. So one package you can use is OpenSSL. OpenSSL, you download and install it. Then it has a bunch of commands for factoring and primes and stuff like that. So the one command you want is, for example, is you can download OpenSSL and type prime 17. Is 17 a prime? So OpenSSL 11 is a prime. But open most of the software packages use hexadecimals, a number. So it's actually uh, 1 plus 116 plus 1, 17 decimal. You can also use GPG, GNU PG program, which is a program for public encryption and decryption and signing to generate prime numbers. You say I want a prime number, 30 bit prime number. So it prints a number, again it is in hexadecimal and you convert to decimal. And then you try another example you should try is using the op open SSL to generate a public and a private key pair. So you, you type open SSL, you download and install it in your command line. 
you say open SSL generate RSA and output is key dot PM PM is a format key format so then uh, uh, open SSL will generate a RSA key and it's it's using 512 bit modulus and it runs this number and exponent is 65537 which is 1001 it just happens to be a good number and what most of the soft, most software do is they use the same exponent as long as the other numbers are random and large E doesn't matter and then you can use OpenSSL to uh, to look at the number you say OpenSSL RSA input key dot PM and then output the text and then you, you watch the output in less pipe it to less so you can see all the data about your about your key okay and later lectures we'll see how RSA works